I want to start off by doing a real short introduction about who I am and why I'm even talking about this. Um, my name is Barb Steele, and as Justin said, I work with the city of Urbana. I have been involved with IPW Man since before it actually was IPW Man. Um, I served as the secretary treasurer when it was first organized. Um, we all decided that maybe those two positions weren't quite um, enough work for one person, so we split it into two. And then I served as the secretary and recently um, have been serving as the vice president. Um, I, I want to go through a history of IPW man. Um, I want to go through um, a little bit about um, what we have done so far, why we should encourage people to join, even if you are a member, why you might want to encourage other agencies that are in your neighboring uh, communities to join, and then um, to talk a little bit more about how to actually ask for help. Uh, we, as a, whenever we're doing these presentations, I think a lot of times we don't um, think about ask or telling people how to how our response actually works. How do you ask for activation? So I want to spend at the end a little bit more time with that. And lastly, if you have any questions please feel free to ask them and we'll try to get through as many as we can um, at the end of the presentation. So um, when a disaster helps or hits, we're going to be there to help you through. Um, I think sometimes about my uncle Roy, who uh, would occasionally stop in unexpectedly unannounced uh, for a visit. And then uh, after he would leave, there would be a massive cleanup from everything that um, his kids and he left behind. So, you know, it's not a matter of if he's going to come and visit, it's when he's going to come and visit. And it's the same thing with storms. Um, when I first moved to Urbana, people told me that Urbana was in this little dip and we would never have a tornado. Well, in 1996, they shattered my whole illusion and a tornado did actually hit. And it, it brings to your mind really how vulnerable we all are. And if it's not a tornado, it could be some other kind of an emergency that taxes all of your resources. <clears throat> why, would we, why did we think it was important to form a statewide public works network? One of the things is we found out in several different instances, but this 1996 one was an example that when a disaster strikes, your resources run out quickly. And I'm not talking necessarily about barricades or things like that, but your manpower. You can only work so many 12 hour shifts before people start to become fatigued. And also as an example, sort of like with this 1996 tornado and more recently the derechos that went through kind of North Central Illinois, when a disaster hits, it's not going to be confined necessarily to one area. Um, you might think, well, if, if a disaster hits me, I can always call the, the community next door and they can come and help me. And when it hits in, in, in the same kind of intensity like it did earlier this year, your neighbors are also trying to work their way through cleanup so that they can recover from these disasters. Um, during the tornado that hit Urbana, we found out that our comptroller's home was destroyed. So in addition to him trying to process all the paperwork to make sure we got reimbursed, he was also trying to find a place for his family to stay. And they were trying to you know, go through their things to figure out what to keep and what they, they were missing and all of that. So um, those things were made, were what made us believe that we really could benefit from having a statewide public works network. The other thing is, is that there were already some um, response organizations that had formed mutual aid networks. For example, ILEAS, which is a mutual aid network for law enforcement, for police, and MABUS, which is uh, a mutual aid network for fire. 
Um, I'm going to give you a brief history here about how we came into existence. Um, this next slide actually says, um, talks about some of the, the different things that have happened prior to our organization uh, deciding to form. Both 9-11 and Hurricane Katrina had a significant impact on public works ability to respond to disasters. I don't know if you remember or not, but during 9-11 or following 9-11, uh, practically every fire department that had a an engine to spare kind of rushed to New York City. And a similar thing happened with Hurricane Katrina. What that did, they weren't necessarily asked to come. And it, it not only uh, were, they tr were these communities trying to respond to cleanup and recovery from the disaster, they also had this group of people who who were trying to figure out well where would we stay where do we locate for staging and and it created an additional burden on them because of the uh, influx of people who just they were good hearted and just wanted to help so what was what happened after these two disasters was um, they established uh, a criteria uh, not a criteria, but a system for responding to emergencies. So the Homeland Security Presidential Declaration 5 established this network that outlined how you would respond to a disaster. One of the most important things is that the person who would be the incident commander would be the one who's in control of what's going on at that time. Now, it usually ends up that Public Works is one of the first ones in whether they're trying to clear the streets so that the trucks and, and squad cars can get through, or at the end where they're, they're trying to clean up the debris, they most likely would be the incident commander at some point in time in that operation. The other thing is under Homeland Security Presidential Declaration 8, they finally recognized and expanded their uh, definition of first responders to include public works personnel. We started to notice some of the impacts of, of the Katrina and 9-11, um, uh, I don't know if you want to call them mistakes or, or lessons learned would be a better term. Um, I'm, I know this says 2007, but I'm going to go back even another year and I'm going to explain how the people in this area uh, started to, to gravitate towards uh, forming a mutual aid network. In, um, on December 1st of 2006, it surprised me that it was so close in, in, in this time of year, but um, Macon County and the city of Decatur had a significant ice storm that caused quite a bit of damage. It had been a historic thing that public works agencies want to help each other out. And in this particular case, the cities of Champaign and Urbana and the village of Savoy offered to go to Decatur to help them with their debris removal. Um, there was kind of this tangent agreement that if they would qualify for federal reimbursement, that um, Decatur would put in the hours um, that those three communities uh, contributed and if there was any reimbursement that they would go to Champaign, Urbana, and Savoy. So after everything was over with, they did get a uh, federal reimbursement and um, the Decatur, city of Decatur was talking about, okay, so we've got Urbana, Champaign, and Savoy that we need to reimburse and their federal government's like, well, what, what do you, where's your agreement? And like, oh, it's just a handshake. We do this for each other whenever somebody's in need we help them out. The federal government said, in order for us to do that, there has to be a signed written agreement among you before the incident occurs. And this was one of the last times the federal government waived that and said, this time we will reimburse, but from here on out, there has to be a signed agreement prior to the disaster occurring. The other thing about this is 
similar to what I'd mentioned before, we had volunteered to go there and we just kind of showed up. And the other thing the federal government said was, you have to be, your assistance has to be requested. It can't be where you just show up on the doorstep and say, hey, I'm, I've got a backhoe and I'm here to help you. So those were some things that we started to look at. How do we formalize a request for emergency assistance? I like to credit this woman, Tammy Bennett. In 2007, she spearheaded an effort to start a statewide mutual aid network. She worked with ILEAS and Mavis and IEMA, the Illinois Terrorism Task Force, and she was actually working with Champaign, Urbana, and Savoy so that we could develop a mutual aid network. While we were doing this, we realized there were areas uh, across the state doing the same thing that we were. So we started to meet as a sort of a statewide group and um, started to work on a mutual aid network, bylaws, um, procedures and policies. And by 2008, we um, formed a loose coalition. We had an interim board of directors elected and on January 1st of 2009, IPW Man was incorporated and the first three member communities, I have to mention this because City of Urbana is one of them, but it was Stevenson County, Village of Wakanda and City of Urbana. That was in January. By May of that year, we had 18 members and we were asked by the state of Illinois to show them what we could do. So of those 18 member agencies, six of them sent a group of people down to Carterville and in a week's time provided over $100,000 worth of assistance to Carterville, who uh, was trying to clean up from straight line winds similar to what we had earlier this year. Um, I thought it was really impressive that we had people from, if, if you know where Carterville is, it's close to Marion. We had people from Stevenson County there. We had people from Villa Park. We had Macomb, Champaign and Urbana. So we had a, a large um, response from people who were quite, quite a ways away from that. Um, after we were finished, the uh, Public Works of uh, Director at Carterville offered to write his, uh, his own personal check so that he could become a member of our organization. We didn't, we didn't expect him to do that, but it showed how impressed he was with what we were able to do. Since 2009, uh, we have grown. We now have a seat on the Illinois Terrorism Task Force so that we can uh, participate in exercises, statewide exercises that they do um, about how to respond to emergencies. Uh, we also are in the state emergency operations center whenever they need us to be there. And we also have representation uh, for uh, with other mutual aid organizations. We have a memorandum of understanding with the Illinois Emergency Management Agency, Mavis and ILEAS, so that we can work together with them during um, disasters. So in 2009, we had three members representing three counties. And as of now, we have 60 counties that are representing over 400 members. We're organized where we have um, a governing board, president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, past president, and 16 regional directors. And as we advance on the slides, I'll show you um, the regions that we have, but it's two directors per region. In cases where we need to quickly make decisions, we also have an executive board where um, the president and, and the executive officers, in addition to one regional director, can make decisions quickly and then notify the remainder of the board of directors. This shows the regions that we have. If you know, if you, I don't know if you're aware of the Illinois emergency management regions or not, but these are the same regions that they have. So when we respond to a disaster, we're, 
we're basically speaking the same language. If we're talking about the, we're sending out somebody in region seven, IEMA knows where we're, we're sending people. And on the left, those are the communities that have um, directors representing those regions. If you notice region seven, where I'm from, we do have a vacancy. And if any of you are living in region seven and are interested, please let me know. Let's see, we've been responding since Carterville. And as of now, we have provided over four and a half million dollars in mutual aid to the disasters where we have responded. This is a list of the communities that have requested assistance uh, from IPW man. Most recently, we had six agencies that asked for assistance during the uh, cleanup after the straight line winds. Some of the things that we offer to communities when we respond, one is incident management. Sometimes um, people just need somebody to take over and to actually help with organizing the response. Like I said, sometimes they're working 12 hour shifts and they aren't really having a chance to get rest and we can come in and help with that. We've done debris removal. We've helped uh, provide pumps for areas when they've had uh, a need to pump out large amounts of water. We've helped with sandbagging along the Illinois River. And obviously with uh, the tornadoes, uh, that picture that you saw at the very beginning was from Washington, Illinois. We've helped with tornado debris cleanup. And as part of the major thing with debris removal and tornado debris cleanup, we've also had chipper crews out to help reduce some of the debris that is created. Um, I'm gonna show you now a short video um, that I think answers the question of why join. Um, you'll have to bear with me here for a little bit because I am somewhat a novice in doing this and my able uh, moderator, Justin, is going to try to show you this short video. All right, sounds good. I'll take this, Barb. If you just want to mute your microphone while I play this. He knows that I'm also not very savvy in doing this.
All right, Barb, you could take back over the screen. We're hopeful here. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to work on this. Sorry, people. You have to bear with me here while I get this done here. Am I on now, Justin? Have to re-screen share to uh, click the application window and then click the, the presentation. Okay. I apologize, people. We'll get it here. Ah, there we go. We have it now. Yes, yeah, so you're gonna have to back off and actually maximize it, and then uh, and then start it. All right. Just there for just for the audience's information. Justin has been so sweet and showing me how to do this and still I get things kind of mixed up here. So we're good now? Yep, we're good to go. Awesome. So anyway, I really appreciate um, the mayor of Shanoa for, for doing that video for us. And what he was talking about is unfortunately what we have happen often where a community contacts us after the disaster has hit. And as I explained to you earlier, that in order for us to really help them, we have to have something in place prior to when a disaster hits. So um, we, we've been trying to encourage people to join, um, but unfortunately, sometimes um, it doesn't happen until after they have the disaster. Currently, Shanoa is a member. Um, we also had this happen with Coal City, where at uh, they had a disaster and they weren't a member. They called and they said, can you help us? We weren't able to, they joined. And unfortunately for them, they had another disaster hit, but at that time, at least we could come and help them uh, recover from uh, the tornado that hit their community. Uh, there are some reasons why we think people should join our organization. And of course, I'm extremely biased. I do think that this is a wonderful organization to belong to. As, as um, Mayor Wilder said, it's, a, it's an inexpensive insurance policy. You have access to statewide resources. As I explained when we responded to Carterville, we had people from Northern Illinois coming down to the Southern Illinois from Western part of the state coming. So you have access to different resources that you may not have um, in your own community. Uh, when you work together, it makes recovery and reimbursement go faster and more smoothly. We would be tracking our own uh, resources. So it's not where you have to sit there and figure out how many people we have or how many trucks responded. We would be taking care of that and giving that information to you. And as far as federal reimbursement, it's getting harder and harder to get that money. But when um, you do request that, it's if they do give it to people, it's usually a 75-25 split. So if this, let's say, for example, your cleanup was $100,000, which seems pretty, pretty, um, a pretty small amount, but they would give um, 75,000 and then the community would donate 25,000 towards the recovery. You can include the amount of time that IPW man gave to you towards the $25,000. So we, we provide that benefit to you also. Our organization is for public works agencies. We provide training. Uh, we have conferences. Uh, we try to do things that give you a chance to get to know other people uh, in our organization so you do know what resources are available. Oops, sorry about that. These are some of the things where mutual aid could be used. Obviously, after tornadoes, Blizzards and ice storms have helped with flooding. 
if you have the infrastructure failures, earthquakes, terrorism events, and non-emergency planned events. Those are all situations where you could ask for assistance if you need it. These are some of the things that could be provided, heavy equipment and trailers. I, I can go through all of them. We have um, a cache of uh, Starcom radios, and Starcom radios are radios that can be used to communicate across uh, mutual aid agencies, so you can talk to police and fire. We have access to those if a community needs them, and you um, also have access to our mobile command centers. We have three of those. So let's say a tornado comes through and it, it knocks out your public works center, you could use one of those mobile command centers as a place to um, use your, or to center your operations. So membership is for any public organization that performs a public works function. It can be any of those that are listed above. And we have those groups or those organizations within IPW man. These are some of the things that I think are important about what we offer. Um, when we were trying to decide what to do about organizing, uh, we were trying to decide, do we collect membership dues to uh, fund our organization or do we wait until a disaster hits and then hand somebody a bill for the uh, reimbursement of what we offered to them? Uh, we decided that it would be better to provide the first five days of support at no cost because nothing is worse than for your community to be hit by a devastating um, emergency or disaster and then have someone give you a bill for that uh, additional work. Another important part about IPW Man is it's, a, it's the same agreement for every agency that belongs in the organization. I looked this up. We have um, Willow Township, which is in Piatt County, and it has 839 people who live in that township. They signed the same agreement as Cook County, which has 5 million, what did I have, 150,000 people. Same agreement. It doesn't matter what size your community is, whether it's a county, whether it's a township, they all sign the same agreement. And there is a possibility that if uh, it goes, if the cleanup goes beyond five days, that they may um, be able to reimburse people. Uh, that, again, I said reimbursement is becoming harder and harder to um, receive from the federal government. But if it was uh, serious enough that they were providing reimbursement, you would be eligible for that. We ask that people provide a 12-hour minimum response commitment. And by that, what we mean is that if you agree that you can help, we're asking that you provide one day of service at least. It's not helpful to say, oh, I can come for a couple of hours. Because by the time you get there and they um, let you know what needs to be done and you go report to that location, it's almost time for you to go back home. So we, we're asking that if you do commit, that you at least do it for one, one work day. Our members are not required to respond, but it amazes me every single time we've put out a request that people are always willing to help each other because they know that there's a possibility that they may be in that situation and they need someone to help them. And as we said before, let's say you said, oh, I can come and work for five days and something happens in your community that you need to go back. We don't hold people to that commitment. We'd like for them to stay, but if there's something that keeps them from being able to do that, we understand that their, their community is what's their top priority. I want to talk a little bit about activation. Um, and, and then I will take questions. Um, everybody who becomes a member should receive a little orange card. And it either is a, a portrait or landscape, but it has a number on there. We have a um, 
call center that operates seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And if you need assistance, you can call that number, give them general information, and they will contact an IPW man duty officer. We have two people who are on call. It rotates every month. And um, this particular quarter, we have three people because we have some new um, duty officers who are in training. But those people then help coordinate the response. So the IPW man member calls. It's not 911, but it is our emergency uh, call center. The call center calls our duty officer and they send out a request. Depending on the size of the disaster, it depends on how many of the regions they contact, but they will contact regions and then those people who can respond will call them back. They Then the duty officer will call the IPW man, uh, uh, sorry, IPW man member who's requesting assistance and then coordinate the response. Now there is a cost involved in being a member and it's based on the population that you serve. And I have to explain this because I know that a lot of people have questions about this. We've had people say, well, our county is a member, but we aren't, so can't you come and help us? And the thing is, the county may be a member, but they may not have jurisdiction over your infrastructure. And if you have jurisdiction over your infrastructure and you aren't a member, we can't come in and respond. So uh, this is the basis, this is what our um, membership, annual membership dues are. And like I said, it's based on your the population that you serve. By the way, I keep thinking Carterville paid $100, pays $100 a year. And then the first year of our um, activation, when we went down there, we gave them over $100,000 worth of aid. So just think about how many years it'll take before they're actually in a deficit. Our dues are um, used to support some of the services that we offer. It goes towards our dispatch center. We have a website and the address will be here up at the uh, last slide. We have some resource maintenance that we have uh, like for our Starcom radios and um, our mobile emergency operations center trailers. We did hire a person to do administrative support for us. All of those people who I showed you who are regional directors and um, executive officers do have day jobs. And a lot of us were trying to do not only uh, keep track of members and send out newsletters and uh, the, the billing for dues and all of this, and we found out we really did need someone to help us take care of those matters. We have an annual conference in October, and our dues help pay for part of that. And the last thing is we have director and officer's liability insurance that we have to carry. So that's the different things that our dues actually help pay for. How you can become a member is by visiting the website. You can download the forms. And um, one of the things is that um, you, unless you're a township, you do need to pass an ordinance or resolution that authorizes your mayor or your board president, someone to sign the mutual aid agreement. And once you complete those forms, I also want to point out it's extremely important to make sure that you have the contact information. Um, as many people as you can list for us to contact because the worst thing would be is if we come to your staging area and there's no one there, and we don't know who to get a hold of to find out what our assignments would be. Um, a few reminders, and this is very much similar to what um, Mayor Wilder said in the video, that no community is too large or too small to need help in a disaster. And even if you can just spare one truck and one person, if 10 communities could do that, it would be a great help in uh, helping our members 
um, recover from a disaster. This is our website, www.ipwman.org.